What is going on, Swoopers? Welcome back to another episode of Swoop Luke, episode 229. We'll be reviewing the <sighs> Collingwood Western Bulldogs game, so let's run the intro, jump straight into it. Just before we do jump straight into it, of course, follow me on all my social media accounts that will be popping down below. If you are a new Swooper, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell if you like what I'm putting out. If you are a returning Swooper, Welcome back. Thank you so much for rejoining me. All right. God, let's get into this review. So on an absolutely beautiful Friday night, the MCG was open. We got to experience games at the G again. You know, the walk-up was amazing. You know, South Bank and just the city just in general. Uh, and then Collingwood put on that trash, that absolute Trash for us to all watch. 50,000 of us. Um, look, you wait all... Well, we've waited 500 and something odd days um, for, you know, the guys to come back so we can watch the guys uh, play. And they put on that display and it was insipid, horrid, at times pathetic. Um, and I know it's harsh. I know it's only round one. And yeah... We got smashed in round one, 2018, we made the grand final. But th I felt like at times there was just no heart. And I know a lot of you will agree with me um, on that as well. It was just, it wasn't a good time. The, the, the atmosphere was amazing, but watching the game wasn't a good time. So the Bulldogs came out absolutely firing like they had a mission. And they're, you know, obviously the, the true thing was their mission. You know, they want to win... Uh, for Trelaw, they kicked the first three goals in like five minutes and they were absolutely on fire. And I go, here we freaking go. We're going to be here for all day and we're just going to get absolutely smashed. You could just tell that the guys just weren't on at all. And then throughout the game, you know, after that first six minutes, we kind of changed it up, made it a little bit more of a slog. But in saying that, we only kicked that uh, one goal in the first quarter. But then after that, it was just like, we just, it just seemed like we didn't want to, didn't want to be there, and just, our skills were really poor, there was no, um, there was no manning up at times, the, the Bulldogs were just free to do whatever the hell they wanted, you know, and it says something when, and we'll talk a little bit about it later, I think nine out of the top ten players for disposal gets were all Bulldogs players, we were just absolutely rorted in every single aspect of the game, and there was players just not playing to the standards that we set for them and that they set for themselves as well. But but the game uh, as a whole in general, it was scrappy at times. The Bulldogs had like a million inside 50s. The, the scoreboard flattered us. We only went down by 16 points. So we only went down by less than three goals, but we should have been down by six or seven goals. The Doggies could get it up into their, in, uh, into their 50, but they just couldn't make uh, the most of their chances. And, you know, we kicked 7 11, so we couldn't make the most of our chances either, it seemed. But the scoreboard did flatter us. If the doggies were a little bit better, they would have just absolutely pounded us. It just it just makes you wonder, like, is this how it's going to be for the rest of the season? Is this, you know, is it just a weird, is it just a weird time, just a, a weird game, and, and we'll come out against Carlton and, and smash them? But we were just really, 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 really poor. And um, look, I'm telling you, it had shades of 2014 to 2017 in there. And it's something that you don't want to see. So my likes and dislikes. There wasn't a lot to like about this game. Besides, let me just tell you, our defense was fucking impeccable, right? I know we still lost the game, but our defense was absolutely incredible Darcy Moore, uh, Jeremy Howe, even Jack Madden when the ball was down there. Yeah, look, I don't really trust him when he does have the ball, but we were getting bombarded, you know, and he was there standing up. Braden Maynard, uh, Chris Penny was down there. Isaac Quainel, just the only one trying to generate any sort of run for us. But Darcy Moore was absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. Moore had 18 disposals at like 90% efficiency, nine intercept marks, tw uh, sorry, nine intercept possessions, just 12 marks, 6 contested marks, 
He was just everywhere. And if it wasn't for more, we would have gotten smashed by so many more uh, points than we did. And this is why I find it so stupid when people say, Chuck Moore up front, Chuck Moore up front. No, we don't have another defender that can do what Moore can do down back. So why would you chuck an All-Australian, you know, centre-half back, full-back, um, into the forward line? It's just absolutely ridiculous. I also liked Noble's game. He did try his uh, hard out, 22 possessions, uh, one of our major ball winners. He's just coming into, into his own. And you got to remember, this is only, what, his third um, season? Oh, well, sorry, second season. No, third, because we picked him up mid-season uh, in 20. 20- 19 right um with the club so he's just going to get better i love his run you know when he jumps into the midfield as well it was uh really nice another thing i really liked was cox's efforts were really freaking good as well look the thing with cox is he can take a good mark right he can take a freaking good mark but if he gets held how is he supposed to take the mark the umpires just don't see it for some freaking reason and it happens maybe Three out of every five ruck, uh, marking contests, Cox would just get held off the ball, and then he's, he's trying to mark the ball with one arm, but it's just play on. Ridiculous. But I love that he tries. He gets into the positions. Yes, I would just love him leading from the forward, uh, from deep forward, and not have anyone else start in there. Um, but that's not going to happen with the gameplay that we, oh, sorry, the game plan that we have. My dislikes, everything. Uh, everything that I didn't mention in my life is a dislike. We had too many passengers uh, last night. Look, I don't, you know me, I don't like calling out names and stuff like that. Um, and look, I want to mention Ollie Henry here, but I know he's a first gamer, overwhelming, big crowd. I get it, I get it, I get it. He just has to be in the VFL, get a bit of that confidence up, bit of defensive work. He dropped a couple of easy marks that he should have taken. Um, so I think, you know, he's had a taste of it. Awesome. Put him back into the VFL, get a, get a little bit more confidence up, and bring him back because he's going to be a player, that's for sure. Trey Rusco doesn't have any defensive ability whatsoever. He needs to uh, go into the uh, VFL as well. I saw a comment on Twitter, I can't remember who said it. They said that they should chuck Rusco into the um, defensive half of the ground in the VFL to, to teach him how to defend because it looks like he's doing a lot of what Steve-O does, just one way running and not defending uh, properly. Same with Sire. He only got like one kick or something ridiculous like that. He needs to be better. There was a lot of players that just, like our bottom six, Will Hoskin Elliott um, as well. Look, even Pendlebury at times was dropping marks. And it's just, it was contagious. The, the poor form was contagious. Another thing I want to talk about is Brody Grundy. So there's been a lot of talk about him. $7 million contract, we know. He usually eats up Timmy English for freaking breakfast in this fixture they bring in steph martin and then it's a whole different ball game he's playing against two rucks yes we had heaps of hitouts we had heaps of hitouts i think we ended up winning the hitouts like in the 40s and they were you know less than 20 or something ridiculous like that but we don't win clearances because like i keep saying the opposition shark the opposition shark grundy's taps and take it bailey smith was doing it you know all their midfields. Bont was doing it at times as well. Trelaw even did it. We need a freaking good ruck coach and, our, and the ruck midfield connection isn't there and it should be because Grundy, we know, can be the best ruckman in the game and he just isn't at the moment and it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. <sighs> Look, I'm not even going to get into... I think this is going to be a separate video if I talk about the game plan and the game style and breaking down the actual game itself if I have time this week. But our decision making is so poor, so poor. You know, there was a there was a bit where um, Will Hoskin Elliott had someone free in the forward line, and he just shanked the kick so hard they go over, and uh, Norton kicks a goal or whatever. Jordan Degoe had um, Elliott and Cox out right in front of him. He decides to not hit any of them, and it gets turned over. There was a lot of hype for us in the preseason, and. Uh, Sorry, a lot of internal hype for us in the preseason. But but it's just round one, yeah? It's just, all I'm telling myself is just round one. It's just round one. It's just round one. So in this new segment, Stats the Way, I'm just going to go over some of the stats and give my quick thoughts on them. So disposals, we got done by, you know, 149 disposals. So we had 316, 
the Bulldogs had 465. What does that mean? It means that they were just generating the more play. They were, had had the most possession, um, and it just really fucks you if if you're 150 less disposals. You know they had nearly 100 more handballs, 60 more kicks. Look at these inside 50s. They had 60. We had 41. 60 inside 50s. That's ridiculous. And then you know we go and we go and do that. 18 shots from 41 inside 50s for us at less than 50 percent. Ridiculous. Like, look, what I was saying, hitouts, 46 to 19, clearances, 32 38. We lost the clearances. The Bulldogs scored um, 34 points from stoppages, whilst we scored 16 points. So you can see that was the um, pretty much the difference there. That was 20 something points uh, in favor of the Bulldogs from clearances because they're sharking Grundy's taps. It happens every single week. I, I just don't understand. Uncontested possessions, 180 to 304 they that just tells me that they they the bulldogs just freaking it was their game they dictated play it was the bulldogs's game um and we just we just couldn't put it on to them so on instagram i asked you guys to leave me some questions i'm going to read them now i haven't read them before so we'll go through them together there is a lot here um where to Chase Basil 17 asks, where to next after this loss? We just got to reassess, you know. We got Carlton in five days now, or six days, whatever it is, on Thursday night. And if Carlton play anything like they did against Richmond, we're going to be in for an absolute bloodbath if we bring what we brought uh, on Friday, which I don't think we will. I think we'll be okay against Carlton, but uh, something, has, something has to click, 100%. Grace underscore Dawson 8 says, do we keep Oli Henry for next week? Like I said earlier, I think Oli just needs a run in the, in the VFL. Uh, Greenwood and, and Main probably come in for, for, for him. Not for his position, but, you know, we could even bring in McRae or Bo McCreary as well. Uh, Moose says, thoughts on the forward line? Look, I think the forward line works well when it's more the midfield's connection to the forward line. So many rush kicks, uh, which... It just doesn't leave. It doesn't provide the best option for us. I love Cox. Love my check. Elliot shouldn't be in the midfield anymore. Just leave him as a permanent forward. It's where he does his best work. Does Cameron come in as second ruck so Cox can stay forward? Yes, Captain A B underscore official. Cameron does come in to provide second ruck. I've been saying it. I think I was saying it all preseason. Cox needs to stay forward and not fucking move from that fucking goal square. Jesus Christ. So a couple of from uh, a couple about uh, I was gonna say Nick Dacos. A couple about Josh Dacos. Jez underscore ninety says why is Dacos playing in a forward pocket? Stupid. Nick Simmons seven says why does Dacos get hyped up all off season, then doesn't get a touch round one? Very poor. Out of position. Out of position. What's Buckley's favorite position for players? Out of position. At one point, Dacos. I'm pretty sure you can correct me if I'm wrong. Was tagging or or playing really close to Caleb Daniel in um. Uh, as a, you know, when Cal Daniel was on the half back line um, and trying to mitigate his run because Cal Daniel was a great player. We said no to Phillips because Dacos was on the wing and now we're doing exactly what we did to Phillips. We put, uh, you know, last year we put Phillips as a half forward who isn't a half forward and Dacos on the wing. Now we're putting Dacos as a half forward who should be on the wing because that's his fucking position. I just don't understand what this, what this love affair is with playing players out of position. It's ridiculous. And Jacko Lobby says, one of the new draftees play over Thomas. Look, I like Thomas's effort. He's not going to have the 2018 season that he, you know, had. Um, look, I like his effort. I think he gets he gets stay, stays in the team because of that effort. But I see Will Hoskinelli coming out. And I want a Bo McCreary. I want uh, a Finlay McRae, Greenwood, or Maine. Someone that just gives us grunt. Uh, Finlay McRae is just... A beautiful elite user of the ball, so we've so we've heard and, and watched in the VFL. So he's going to come into the team sooner rather than later. Anyway, my final thoughts. Look, oh, what a game! My final thoughts are what a game. It's only round one, which is beautiful. This didn't happen in the final. This didn't happen when we uh, couldn't afford to lose. We still have twenty two games to, you know, turn it turn it around. We have Carlton on Thursday, and that's going to be a huge test. The, the the ledger is even, you know. So one win will take us above them in our total win losses. Oh, God. I'm looking forward to it, and I'm not looking forward to it at the same time. So 
It's going to be exciting either way. But look, as always, I'd love to know your thoughts on the game. Leave them down below. In the meantime, like, comment, subscribe. Tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pets. And until next time, Double Shackers, I'll see you later. Ooh la la.